it's one of those concepts. It's just it's self-referential. You know, it just keeps coming up over and over again in any system or microsystem that you um, you dissect. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foreign Gems, where we bring you foreign perspectives on familiar topics such as career and self-development. I'm Mac. I am Ola. And today we have a very interesting topic for you. We're going to be talking about leverage. And why are we talking about leverage today, Ola? Yeah, Mark and I were dis uh, discussing different topics that we can talk about. And for today, we thought um, leverage might be something that might be more useful to y'all because for us, it's something that is very top of mind uh, that we need to get better at after the layoff, which we discussed in the last episode. Um, leverage is just one of the ways we can get uh, good, uh, best results without doing too much. So uh, we thought it might be actionable to discuss that with y'all today. Yeah, you know the saying, life imitates art? For us, it's almost like art is imitating life. So whatever is top of mind makes for a good topic. It makes it, uh, it, makes it very actionable because we're trying to actually use these principles in practice. And one of them that we could definitely improve on is this concept of leverage. And actually, off, off mic, you were mentioning something really interesting about the Pareto Principle. Do you want to dive into that a little bit? Yeah, so you can't talk about leverage without talking about the Pareto Principle, which is uh, the principle of 80-20. Uh, you can also call it the 80-20 rule, which is where you, well, most systems get the 80% of their results from 20% of agents or factors. Yeah, and I'm feeling that a lot recently, like, we mentioned in the update episode uh, that that is probably the one that's most recently out, but maybe a couple episodes ago for for the listeners, is like what life's been like after the whole layoff thing. And I've been you know consulting on the side, and I've definitely noticed this principle at play. Twenty percent of my clients are eighty percent of my income, and a lot of the other eighty percent they actually are taking up more of the time. So I'm finding ways or thinking about how I can use this idea of the Pareto Principle to get more of the 20% that's working really well and not spend as much time on the 80% that's not. Okay, yeah, that's a great example. We'll discuss more examples as we uh, go into the podcast. But before we even get into that, can we... Uh, I, know, I know you and I, we've discussed about this before, but just for the listeners, yeah. the different types of leverage. Yeah, okay. So I think uh, we actually were referencing him before we started the episode, but Naval Ravikant puts it in a really succinct and uh, easy to comprehend ways. There's really three main buckets of leverage that you can use. Uh, the first one's probably the most obvious and the one where most people are using, which is leveraging their time. So if you're working at a warehouse or something like that, you are giving time to the company and the company pays you for that time. So you're leveraging your time in order to get some sort of income. The other bucket is capital, and lots of things fall into this bucket. Things like money fall into capital, resources that you might have, like your car could be considered a form of capital leverage. So for example, if you're you know, driving for Uber or something like that, you're leveraging that, your capital, and your time in that case. And then the third big bucket is media, uh, which you could argue this podcast is a form of that leverage. Once we record this episode, it's going to live on the internet for as long as we want it to continuing to provide value and continuing to kind of stand in our place in terms of explaining certain concepts. So that's another form of leverage that you could use. Can you think of anything else or do you think we covered it with those buckets? Yeah, those are the main buckets. There's a lot of things that, you know, uh, as Mark mentioned, that those things encompass. Uh, your, you mentioned, I think you mentioned knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, your network, uh, the connections that you have. Um, your inclinations, things that come easy to you that are not necessarily easy to other people. They, it's infinite, literally, the different types of leverage, but they all triangulate towards these three buckets that uh, Mark mentioned. So you might be wondering now, okay, so you've mentioned the Pareto Principle and you've mentioned all these various types of leverage. How are the two closely related? Well, it's about finding the 20% of activities that you're doing within these different forms of leverage that are giving you that 80% of results. And I guarantee you that if you start to audit your own life and understand like how you're spending your time, your capital, and your media, you will understand that some, some of the 
stuff that you're doing is actually delivering most of the results and this episode is mainly about like how to maximize that principle yeah and uh, for a lot of people I mean lo a lot of our listeners are younger and um, it's not always obvious to know what things you can leverage you need to try things you need to experiment you need to, you need to get some data uh, for example this podcast right now you know we are still building it up we're still experimenting there'll be a stage where we start applying that principle where we will maybe not talk about everything we'll just pick the 20 percent of topics that y'all like to uh, tune into and then we can do more of uh, those types of topics uh, another example of those of that was uh, when I used to work as an onboarding specialist at Mars. My walkthroughs used to take like 45 minutes trying to show the customers every aspect of the tool. Then I started, after I did like 50, 100 calls, I realized that they don't care to know about every part. They just want to know what they want to know. And my walkthroughs went from 45 minutes to sometimes 10 minutes. And it all starts from just at the start of the call. So what are you really trying to solve? What would make you why did you book this call? What was the real thing that you were confused about? And then we start from that. And sometimes we still get 45 minutes and sometimes it's just, I answer that question and they sign up or I let them know right away that the tool doesn't do that. And they thank me for saving them time and we both have a good day. So uh, it took a while to get to that point. And I noticed that my performance actually got better because I was able to take more calls. I was able to, you know, have satisfaction uh, it was a great experience for me a great experience for the customers I had more time to think of other ways I could help the company and uh, yeah I didn't know the concept of leverage that much then but that was an example of where I was able to you know leverage the most um, leverageable <laughs> uh, part of, of what I was doing uh, something else I wanted to mention in physics there's also the concept of lever I guess that's where leverage came from. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who said that. I think Aristotle or something. Mm. Like, give me, uh, um, what do you call it? A, li li a liver and enough time and I can lift the world or something like that. Uh, I think enough length on it. Enough le length. And yeah. I, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can find the quote on the internet. <laughs> but the, the concept is the same thing. You know, uh, you need a point, actionable point in a system and then you're able to uh, control the rest of the system. And that goes to show you the power of the. I really love when like philosophical concepts like this like a Pareto principle is, it's like a mix of philosophical and maybe like the physical world a little bit. Mm. But I love when these concepts are relatable throughout both of these types of uh, environments and scenarios. Like for example, like um, when you were talking about the the idea of like in physics where you can push like as far away from an object as possible and you can move a really big object. And then you can also use that in your own life when it comes to like your relationships, for example, mm. and things like that, where you can you can use leverage concepts in the, in them as well and be able to achieve better results, achieve that 80 percent instead of spending all of your effort on, you know, the 80 percent that's bringing you 20. Yeah, uh, it was actually the concept is by Vilfredo Pareto, oh. it, who is an economist. So uh, the concept actually the, came from economics yeah. and it applies in physics, it yeah. applies in the plant the ecosystem you know uh, hair in the ecosystem is it powers most of the energy that transfers across plants animals everything exactly. so they, yeah there's always it's just one of those things that follows the lindy effect yeah. which is you know uh, a principle that as uh, study te uh, test of time will continue is most likely what you can trust yeah. and uh, Pareto principle is one of those things okay so I think the best way we can kind of solidify these concepts as to how they pertain to our lives is to speak about you know how how they are affecting our lives currently so i gave you an example about like the whole 20 percent of the clients 80 percent but then there's also the efforts that come from uh, or that i'm putting in in order to try and get more clients for example it's 2080 there as well so like when i I'm, tr I'm trying a lot of different things so like maybe I'll be on an indeed job post to try and find like uh, are they posting about specialists or something like that maybe they're looking for help there then I can reach out that way I'm trying cold just cold approach to businesses that I think would be interesting to work with just reach out to them try and make a connection that kind of thing but the 20% that works for 80% of the results has always been network which again is leverage like we talked about in that, like a couple episodes ago 
being able to leverage people who already know you and can vouch for you is bringing me most of the results when it comes to trying to find find new work and so i'm now leaning more so towards that those actions so like building out the network because i know that once that network is established if i put you know a lot more effort into just working with that network in order to try and get new clients it's going to uh, it's going to do more for me in the future but how do you reach there like i had to try all of these various things to realize that this is the 20 percent that's working this is the 80 percent that maybe has potential but it's not like it shouldn't be top priority right now um, so one actionable takeaway that I can give you is at the beginning of any project or something like this, um, this podcast is an example of that, try a lot of the um, quote unquote best practices, mm. the things that people already know have worked for them, you know, and then see if, how well they work for you. But don't necessarily just assume this one channel is going to be the way that we make progress and then put all of your eggs in that basket. Something that worked for me is to try a lot of different things for a long time. And then once I understand, okay, this is what's really working, you start to double down on that and then reduce activities on the other ones. Yeah, um, yeah. the whole concept of leverage and Pareto principle is input and output. output. Yeah. Like, you know, the things that, uh, the little inputs that have outsized results of output, output, and you can't get the outputs without input in the first place. Yeah. And before you know the inputs that work, you need a lot of input. Some of the things we talk about, by the way, might sound contradictory. And uh, the reason for that is um, when Mark mentioned that, you know, when you're starting something, you need to follow the best practices. I might have mentioned in the previous episode, or we will talk about it at some point, when creating things, I usually don't even like to start with the best practices. Like this podcast is an example again. We didn't start with the best practices. We just started by doing. Mm. We just did what we know, use what we have around us. The first episode was recorded with just our phones. So after that, once we built that muscle, once we've realized that we're comfortable doing this thing, then we follow the best practices. And then once we follow the best practices, so back to Max tips, then we can you can then start looking at, okay, in the best practices, which ones are my are my superpowers? Which ones are my leverage points that I can double down on? and get outsized results and then you start innovating and then you take things to the next level and yeah. I like that you added that piece on because actually before you get to the point where you've tried a bunch of different things and you're like what's working and what's not working, before you get to that point the biggest hurdle is always the start, just start. Hmm. And I think that's one thing like you mentioned that we did really well is just begin at some point and I I would 100%, um, I I agree with that uh, advice 100%, just like get started. Uh, before you even try to put in additional effort. Uh, One thing that I've fallen victim to before is like uh, analysis paralysis. Mm. You know, where it's like, I've got all these various ways I can go about something. Um, Let me do more research into what's the best way to do it. But let me do more research into this. Delaying the actual start of something. Um, Don't delay. Uh, One one of the greatest pieces of advice that I got when I was in high school uh, about like writing an essay is just start by writing the title of the essay. Just write something down. Maybe even put like the date that you're working on the thing down. But just that action of you now putting input into whatever project that you're doing is a is like the little piece that you need at the beginning to build some momentum. So yeah, a great addition to that. I like that. So reduce the time to input. Yeah, exactly. To that's, to like nothing. I'll, uh, that's something I'll write down on my board. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, is something I need to start doing. Cause you know when we do this podcast, we're not experts at everything we discuss. We're not saying we are perfect at any of these things. Leverage, the reason we're talking about this today is we're trying to even get better, you know. Mm. I share what I know with Mark. Mark shares what, I kn- what he knows. We share what we know with y'all and you ask questions. We learn more and everyone grows. Um, we all grow together. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, leverage is something I need to get better at. Uh, tr- starting something without the analysis paralysis. Even though I know very well, you know, just do something. Just don't be, don't try too much. Yeah certain domains that I want to do stuff that I will forget <laughs> and I just won't do that. I will just not take action. Yeah. And um, yeah, just talking about these things and reminding ourselves all the time, it helps um, to reinforce the need, uh, the need to do that. Yeah, I love that. I love that uh, these episodes can act as a bit of an anchor for us as well as the listeners. Like maybe we're talking about leverage right now, but this is not something that pertains to you. It's not like uh, immediately useful or beneficial, but it's now documented, it's out there. So when you come to a time, because everybody does, 
where they start thinking about leverage. Uh, now you have like a resource that you can hop back into and kind of help you think through the ways that you can maximize leverage, for lack of a better term. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit and think about like the various ways that we can use leverage or the various forms of leverage that could be useful to somebody and how an evolution of that leverage could, could happen. So like the typical example of how you develop through the three forms of leverage that we mentioned, the three buckets, uh, time, capital, and then media, is an evolution in somebody's career journey. So at the beginning, like say you're a specialist in something, it really doesn't matter what you're a specialist in, but you're gonna have to put in time. And you put in that time in order to gain things like knowledge, skills, thought leadership, like uh, social capital. These things are then in the second bucket. They're now leverageable as capital. So mm. you can now multiply these. So for example, if you were worth $10 an hour to begin with, but then you became the absolute expert in, your, in that field, now your, your knowledge is another form of leverage that makes your time more valuable. So now you're kind of working with both time and working with capital. But then the next phase from that could be, okay, you become the best in the world at this particular thing and you're now teaching other people through it, through a, a means such as like YouTube videos, for example. So now you're using media to leverage the things that you had had in the past. So you had time, now you've leveraged your knowledge and time into getting more money for your time, and now you have this knowledge and expertise as capital that you can then leverage through media and that will live on forever, constantly kind of giving value to the world while you're sleeping, while you're working on something else. And then now you've kind of graduated through the hierarchy of leverage. Uh, I just thought of something as you were saying that, yeah. and I agree with everything you say, what I'm saying is not in opposition to that, but also like I love a lot of Naval's <laughs> philosophies and ideas, yeah. but I actually think media is not the best bucket for that concept. Yeah. Um, I think How technology you, should be it. Technology? Me yeah, because media is just a form of technology. He does mention um, code. Yeah, and which would fall into like your your bucket technology, so like technology as yeah. a bucket. Okay, because the reason is you no know, media is not, you know it was a technology, and by technology I don't just means like you know tech tools. It's something that was created from understanding science. That's the basic understanding of uh, definition of technology. Yeah. Media is just a form of technology to amplify your ideas. Code is a form of technology to amplify your ideas. Um, I don't know, starting a community or group or something, you, you just need, need to create a vehicle for your ideas. You need to create something that outlives you, something that is bigger than you yeah. in order for you to, um, to have a leverage. Okay. And um, yeah, that's religion is a technology to spread the idea of whatever um, spiritual teachings or whatever. Because uh, I was just thinking, we, um, it's not just media, it's, it goes deeper than that. Yeah, it, it does go beyond a little bit, but it, it's kind of interesting what you can consider technology versus not. Because, for example, like, would you consider books a technology? Yes. So like, that's like a, but it's also a media. Yeah. So like, a, a media, like the, the core word medium is like a, a vessel, like you were mentioning, like yeah. a channel for something. Um, and to me, and I think we're just having like differences in, in uh, like comprehension of a word. So to me, like a medium is like a vehicle that yeah. you can move anything in, regardless of what that vehicle particularly is. And like technology, to me, I always think things that are more science related and are more like computer based related. But that's just like my connotation connotation to it. But I think we're saying roughly the same thing, like a vehicle that can run and continue to deliver value without you continuously putting input into it like once you put input into it the one time it's good to go yeah the reason I clarified that um, I don't think it's difference in compression um, I do think I do see media you know as medium multi uh, plural yeah. but the common definition of media is not that clear to everyone you know mm -hmm. this society has what it, when you think of media, you think of like music, news, and social yeah. media, and everything. And I just wanted to clarify that it's not that's not what we are talking about. Mm. We're talking about media as a medium of like consumables. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something yeah. to 
amplify your ideas. So we're talking about the same thing. I just wanted to point out to uh, to the audience. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think like try, thinking about it like in that scale of graduation is is very useful because it can it can tell you where to invest a lot of your time. Mm. Like if you can think about early on, okay, I can see how this could graduate. Like I can see, okay, now I'm putting time into this thing. Um, and I can see how that could then turn into like a capital that would let like multiply the value of the time that I'm putting into it. And I can see how this can then become like some sort of consumable thing. As long as you can see that clear path, I think it's a worthwhile investment. But if something is capped by the, like the time that you're putting into it, it, it's, I'm not saying it's not a worthwhile uh, endeavor, uh, but it will be more difficult for you to maximize the value of that particular time that you're spending on it. Um, let me try and think of an example off the top of my head. So, uh, okay, like cutting grass, for example. Mm. You, can, you can become the best grass cutter uh, ever, but at some point, like you cannot physically cut any more grass. Like you will reach the max of your ability to cut grass. And so how can you change that into something more leverageable? Maybe you can use the capital to have more people and then form a company. And then that way you, you, can, you can be at multiple places at once, essentially cutting lots of different pieces of grass. But realizing the limitations of like your day-to-day -day activities on this particular, uh, for this example, cutting grass, will allow you to think about the future, about how like, okay, I'm doing this right now, but then how can I turn this into something more later? And that's something that I'm, I'm trying to uh, like uh, approach my life with more purpose around it's like okay so I'm spending time doing this but can it become something more and this is all for things that I would like to become something more of course like life is a wonderful thing it's <laughs> meant it's for the living you're supposed to do stuff that you just bring you joy sometimes that's enough but if you're working on something that you know you want to be like you know you want to step away from it at some point but you wanted to continue to add value to your life and others thinking about it like starting with the end in mind who said that some dudes did that. Uh, Simon Sinek, I think. Yeah, he's the modern version of that, but it's been around, it's been before, around for before, a while. Yeah. To start with why, guys, how I remember it, because, yeah. you know, marketing. Hey, um, leverage. He <laughs> <it> packaged <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> book. Yeah. yeah. This concept is in my mind. Um, but yeah, the, like, starting with that, knowing, okay, this is how I think it's going to go play out. This is how I can see it, like, uh, multiplying and, and being maximized in the future is, is an excellent way to set off on the right foot and start to find that 20% that's going to bring you the 80% of the results at the end of the day. Yeah, um, I like how you mentioned the word maximize because all the examples and what we've been saying so far implies quantity, but leverage is not just quantity, it's also quality as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's always a concept of the IC, individual contributor in a work environment versus manager. Uh, being a manager is how you can amplify the qu quantity of your work. You have people working under you, you give them instruction, you're getting results through more people. But I see might be how you get the quality of work. So you don't spread yourself too thin. You pick, instead of trying to do everything, being a manager, you pick the 20% of your work that brings you the most satisfaction and you just drill down into just doing those things same as being a consultant or an agency, 20% of your clients, that brings you the most results. It's not more clients all of a sudden, yeah. it's like the ones that you drill down on and you, you might even seem like you're doing less, but all of a sudden your satisfaction is more, you're gaining more money, but yeah, you have to be careful. It's not just about quality, quantity, it's quality as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to like things we can, you know, give the audience that would be actionable and useful right now. So a lot of people, you know, working a job right now how can they use these ideas the idea of leverage and the idea of the Pareto principle to you know advance in their career like what are your thoughts around that yeah uh, some, it's something that took me a while to learn but you mentioned start with the end in mind um, so now what I well just before I left my last job what I started looking at is at the end of the quarter when I'm about to put my performance review what are the things that I will be speaking about you know, I look at what that would look like, mm -hmm. then I start doing just those activities first. Like those are the things that I focus my energy on. Of course, you have to do some other things that you would not be able to output in your performance evaluation. But once you have those things taken care of, it's a lot easier to feel better about your work. Uh, for me, that's the 20% yeah. of things. Okay, so you're thinking about it from, I know I have a performance review coming up, 
I know these are the things that I would like mm. to talk about. Let me focus most of my effort on those things. Therefore, I can expect most of the results coming out on the other side, right? Yeah, exactly. And it depends on the company as well. You know, there are some companies where it's easier. You can break the rules of the performance review and just do what you know the CEO would appreciate that would get you the promotion or whatever you want. So you just have to know what your company or your environment rewards mm -hmm. and try to do those things. Absolutely. I think that's like very great advice. I also really like that you mentioned thinking about what the company wants at the end of the day. I've made this mistake. I'm sure lots of people have made this mistake in their careers, especially early on in just output, just trying to get stuff done. Anybody asks you to do something, work on something, you're like, yep, I'm going to do that. Um, ending up spending a ton of time on things that don't necessarily move the needle. There's your little tech buzzword for the day for the company. And at the end of the day, your performance review comes up. It's like, okay, so this was your mandate was to affect this number by some percentage. Um, so what activities have you been up to? And you're like, I know I did like, you know, tens, twenties, hundreds of, of things throughout this quarter, but I can only point to like five or so that actually, you know, had an impact on the number that I was responsible for at the end of the day. Um, and once you've fallen into this trap a few times, you start to realize very quickly, and I need to I need to be spending a lot of my effort on things that are going to be meaningful at the end of the day, not just like trying to do absolutely everything, putting my name on absolutely everything. That's not really, um, yeah, that's not a, a great way to go about it. Yeah, uh, something I was thinking as you were saying that is me and you are also interdisciplinary people. You know, we have a lot of interest. One of the advantage of <laughs> being an interdisciplinary person or generalist is you don't have the interest you know to in doing 100 percent of anything you are naturally always looking for the 20 percent of things that drive the result when i worked at tim hortons i was not the best at anything but i was the guy that knew how to do everything and that allowed me to be a manager because um there was a there was a better baker than me there was a better faster someone everything there were always someone better but I was the one that knew how to solve problems. So like when there's crisis, when we are short staffed, I'm the one that knows how to get people to do shifts that they don't want to do. When we have a customer, a difficult customer, I'm the one that knows how to calm them down. When the machines are broke, I'm the one that knows how to do the thing. But if you see me on a day to day, you might not, you'll be like, why is this guy the leader? Like, he's just there lazing around, he barely does anything. Yeah. But that's cause you're looking at 80, uh, you're looking at the 80% of the time. Yeah. But then if you see the 20% when, you know, shit is the fan, mm. then you see me in action that, oh, now I get it. That's because I was able to find the 20%. And also because I was taking courses, I was in school, so, you know, I had to, <laughs> I had to balance my time with other things. Yeah. But uh, the older I get, the more I understand this concept, the more I then see examples in my lifetime of, of how it has worked uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Another, for, uh, oh, sorry. Um, for people... I guess something I wanted to point out is earlier in your career, you know, or your life, you know, go for the things that, to go for the time leverage. You have time, you don't have money, you don't have anything. Just make sure you are investing time. That's the leverage you have. Yeah. And then the older you are or the more matured or higher up you are in your career, then that's when you should start going for the other forms of leverage. That's something I wanted to make sure that we don't forget. Yeah, I like that as like a succinct takeaway is like leverage what you have. And that changes over time, like you mentioned. So uh, another piece that I'd like to add on to that is there are ways that you, that you can kind of maximize the other forms of leverage while time is the main one that you have. So yes, absolutely. If time is what you've got to give, time is what you've got to give and you can leverage that. But while you're doing that, think about how you can develop some of the other buckets in order for you to have something else to leverage in the future. So um, for example, again, in early career days, Yes, time might be what you have, but you've also got like the ability to learn something new and like become more of a, a, a specialist when it comes to the particular role that you're doing. All of these things then become things that help you leverage other areas of your life later on. So you could start off at like our hypothetical $10 an hour, but then you spend you know an extra two, three, four hours in your weekend learning a little bit more about your role. Next time your performance review comes or you're applying to a job elsewhere, now you're a different person. So you can leverage your time more effectively as a result of that. So I would encourage like anybody who's listening to this, 
if you know that you know you, you your knowledge is not at the top of what it is that you're offering try and spend more time like learning a little bit more about what it is that you can do <laughs> and then use that to your advantage when the opportunity presents itself at a performance review or something like I'm that. I'm laughing because um, that's to the Pareto principle in play as well. Yeah. You spend 20% so spend of your time on activities that will drive 80% of your Outside results of in the future. Exactly right man. Try and move it. Pareto principle applied to moving through leverage. Yeah, <laughs> it's, um, it's one of those concepts, it's just, it's self-referential, you know, it just keeps coming up over and over again in any system or microsystem that you, um, you dissect. Awesome. Let's talk about some favorite forms of leverage. What would you, what would you say is your favorite form of like a, like a consumable, like a technology? That I have used or that I have seen? That, you, that you've seen. Uh, ooh. This is a interesting question because they all they all nice. Yeah. Media is always a good one. Um, I find, you know, I mentioned in a couple of episodes that someone sent me an article that I wrote a while back that helped them. Now it's helping me, um, and I find that anytime I create content, that it comes back uh, some way in a shape or form. Um, do I notion templates? I do have a section where I write, "How did you find out about this?" And it's always like, "Oh, a tweet or something." And yeah, media is just so easy. And you know, sometimes it's just an idea you just have, don't overthink it, just tweet it, and five years later, it's still bringing in $100 every now and then. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I think media is, is super powerful. Another one that I really like is, is capital, and by that I mean money. I think money is like a really interesting form of leverage. And as long as it's being used for the force of good, I think money can, really help things along like you you can notice it even in your day-to-day -day life like for example over here uh, in BC we've got a really big focus and shift of focus to renewables for example and money is being put behind that and you can actually see some progress being made in things like hydrogen and solar and stuff like that but before that when you know the oil companies were the main kind of that, that's where most of the money was going towards that was the main focus and like as soon as the shift in in our minds has happened in, in terms of like BC as a, or Canada as a country like we need to focus on renewables and started to put money behind something all of a sudden there's like a lot of interest and innovation around something and this is like a really big scale it's not really like I'm not out there putting in a bunch of money into renewables for example uh, but it, it's really interesting how just turning the, the, the flow of cash in a particular direction can really just like supercharge innovation in that space yeah now that, okay, now that you gave that example, I think um, my favorite one would probably be the middle one. So we talk about time, yeah. capital, and then media, technology, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think capital would probably be my favorite one. That's one that is accessible for the majority of people, yeah. and it's something that pays more dividend because technology eventually breaks down. Yeah. You won't always have time, but uh, capital is the one that almost multiplies over time. Yeah. You know, you make friends with the right person, and then they help you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like I know so many people in different communities that we probably haven't talked in like two years, but they're always um, referring people to me for different things. Yeah. And likewise as well, I do the same for them. So like uh, capital people, you know, your yeah. network, network is a form of capital as well. Yeah. And that's one that just pays dividend for throughout a lifetime. Forever. A company, you know, you invest in the right company, you can just keep using the money that you accrue from the, I guess, dividends or whatever, and then keep investing in other things. Capital just continues. Man, that, that networking one might even be like a 1090 rule. Yeah, like, maybe. <laughs> like a small group of the people that you meet will have like really big impact in your life. Um, so like, like we mentioned in the networking episode, like spend, spending a good amount of time actively working on networking like the results from something like that are like infinite i'll give a pro tip on the networking one yeah. um being someone who has a lot of interest means you have a lot of friend group uh, what i realize is i'm bad uh, historically now i'm getting better yeah. at keeping up with everyone yeah. so now in each friend group i find the most social person and that's the person that i keep in touch with the most and then that person keeps you top of mind to everyone else in the group because they are constantly talking to everyone, mm. you know. That's so interesting. it's like, what's all up to? That's a hack. <laughs> that person knows. That's a nice hack. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, yeah, so if anybody also is interested in this topic and is thinking about how they can use different forms of leverage, or you listen to one of the forms of leverage that we mentioned in this episode and you'd like for us to dive a little bit deeper into, please, as always, use any comment section in any of the media forms of leverage that we're using at the moment, such yeah. as like an Instagram page or the YouTube or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, drop us a comment. We'll be happy to dive into it a little bit more. Yeah, please share. I mean, y'all are also nodes in our network. So please help us share, uh, talk, discuss this with your uh, friends, colleagues, um, even people you don't like. <laughs> discuss uh, yeah, discuss these topics. Your enemies. Play it loud. Play it in your cars. You're driving. Uh, make sure that you play the intro part. You know, foreign gems. Right. <laughs> the point we're making is uh, help us distribute these ideas uh, because uh, we want to learn as well. And the more you help us distribute these ideas, the more we can attract more people that will help us learn, and then in return help you learn. And uh, we do have great plans for this projects, podcast, uh, network, okay. and um, we need everyone's support to get there. And speaking of your support, if you know anybody who would like to be on this podcast, or if you yourself would like to be on this podcast, do not hesitate to reach out to one of us. We'd be happy to set up a time, have a little conversation about like a topic that could bring some sort of value to the rest of the listeners. We'd be happy to, to kind of facilitate that and make that happen. But yeah, we are just friends. Um, you know, even if we've never met, we we see you as a friend. So just reach out to us like you reach out to a friend. Our DMs are open, both personal or Foreign Gems official ones. Um, just reach out to us, and one of us will uh, always respond. Always a great time recording with you, Ola. And this was Foreign Gems, our episode on leverage. See you next time, everyone. See you next time.